Hi, it's me Jazzy. I'm back with another tech related video and just a short little video from me today. I was having a clear up recently around the studio area and I came across this V8 live sound card that I bought from Timu. Must be a couple of years ago now and I bought it for a video but never used it. So I figure it might be quite interesting to take a look inside, see what makes it work and actually see if I can get any sound effects out of this thing. Let's get it over on the bench and get it apart, see what's in here. Right, so this particular sound card, I've had this kicking about in the Jazz Tech Studio for a very long time now and it just never got used. Now they still have this on Timu, it's around seven pounds, had a look earlier, and it says you can use it for streaming, gaming, podcasting, all sorts of things. And it has various inputs on the back. So you've got live one and live two. Basically the premise is you can mix the sound from two different phones and add a microphone in and stream it apparently. You can put three different inputs here which are all micro USB oh dear there's charging all power there which is also micro USB and it does have a lithium battery I believe inside we're gonna have a look in a moment we're gonna take it apart see what's inside this probably not a lot it's it rattles a bit and it's not very heavy earphone or speaker output there headset output there basically you can put a three and a half mil jack in there for a condenser mic or you can put a full-size mic jack in there we'll give this a test in a minute and i've never actually used it it's been sat on a shelf as part of the set decor you may have spotted it in some of my earlier videos we've got controls there for mic level echo power switch there which looks like it probably lights up treble bass record level music and monitor level very cheaply made plastic the whole thing is plastic various buttons here for stuff guessing the top row lights up as we have like translucent buttons here and these don't so i think these are the effects here electro pitch bend elimination shock wave shock wave i think that's supposed to be shock wave maybe mc dodge so these are all sound effects basically down the bottom here i'm not sure what pay attention is let's have a look what we got inside and then we'll power it up and see what it does i guess this may or may not be of interest but i'm a little curious to see what's inside it i'm guessing probably not a lot but the fact that i've had it for quite some time sometimes i do buy products all the Timu Tech episodes, I buy the products myself. Nothing is sponsored in that respect by Timu. I buy all the products. I just go on there and I look for interesting and random stuff that I think might be of interest. This one never actually got featured in the end. I need to take all these off. Let's have a look. What have we got? Okay, so there is a rechargeable battery in here. Well, that's the light up on off button ah, it looks like there's multiple colored leds down there so we've got a whole load of tactile membrane switches so when you push the plastic button it detents the aluminium dome and contacts the pad on the board and you can see the top row's got leds that's why we've got translucent buttons then so we've got our potentiometers here this one is a little bit different oh we've got six connectors i'm wondering if that's a stereo pot that's why i reckon this one's stereo this is for the monitor level a couple of polymer aluminium electrolytics there 220 microfarads 10 volts and a crystal here a clock signal probably as the guess, there's our lovely USB, micro USB ports that I love so much. The three, three and a half mil. So that dynamic mic input must be on the underneath. Let's maybe pull this out. So we've got a connector here, that's for the battery. Okay, that makes sense. And then we've just got our push buttons here. What have we got here? LY V8 version 1.2, 2023. Okay. Oh, it's got Bluetooth, is it? It's got a Bluetooth antenna there. Oh yeah, it does. Power and Bluetooth. 
It's unusual why there's no solder mask on the Bluetooth antenna area. I'm not sure that why that would be. Feel free to let me know in the comments if you any idea why they don't put solder mask on that area. There's something in the solder mask that could affect the Bluetooth antenna. I'm not sure on that one. So I've got a plus and minus marked on the board. Now the battery connector just goes to those two little connections where the plus is. So I wonder if this was originally that maybe they soldered the battery on to the board and they changed the design. Or maybe the minus is the ground plane. That would make sense. Right, that potentiometer on the left there, you can see the three holes for the mono potentiometer that are unused. So maybe there was different versions of this. Note all the pots have got tabs coming through the PCB bent over for a bit of mechanical strength where you're moving them about all the time. So there's not a lot else to see on the bottom. There's our microphone jack there. Just sold it in here. That probably says mic input or something similar, I would guess. I'll have a quick look at that under the microscope, actually. It's pretty simple, isn't it? There's not really a lot to it. So whatever this little chip is here, this is probably doing all the processing stuff. And I presume there's some like pre preloaded sound effects and stuff, which are all going to be on there. I would hazard a guess. So a quick look under the microscope, then we'll pop it back together and see if we can get a peep out of it. Now I did look up this part number with no luck on this chip, whether that's a custom chip specifically for this product but I had no joy finding any info on that one. There you can see the array of different LEDs around the on off switch and you can see the Bluetooth antenna with its lack of solder mask there. That's intriguing. I'm not an expert on Bluetooth antenna but I would love to know the reasoning why they leave the solder mask off that section. Is that a normal thing to do? I don't think I've ever noticed it before. So you can see how this potentiometer is different. I reckon that's a stereo one because you've got the six connections rather than the three on the mono ones. And you've got some sort of little transistor there, 603K. Again, there's not a lot of info on these bits. There's a whole section of the board here that's not populated. Look, there could be another three ICs on there. So again, maybe there was different models, different variants of this particular sound card. And we've got the basic version here. Interestingly enough, I noted the manual I downloaded from the current Timu listing shows the inputs as USB-C rather than micro USB. So maybe I've just got an old version here. All right, well, let's pop it back together, shall we? And we'll see if we can get a peep out of it. Let's see what it does. It's also curious that there was only two screws holding the board in, but I noticed there are there are one, two, three, four, five, at least five potential places where there could be a screw. Maybe some sort of cost saving initiative there. Would explain why it's currently only seven pounds. I've no idea how much I paid for this by the way. I've had it for ages. Let's stick all these back in. I guess I'm better off putting that in first and then we'll just put this onto it shall we. Yeah, that looks reasonably successful. So it's a pretty easy teardown, really. Just a few screws. Right, okay, let's put the control knobs back on. I'll better make sure they're in roughly the right position. It's all very flimsy, this. I would not recommend buying this if you want a sound card that feels robust. This does not feel robust in any way at all but it's cheap. So if you need a sound card to hook stuff together and you want something really cheap, then yeah, maybe. I mean, I like to give stuff the benefit of the doubt until I've tried it. It might be at least usable. I, I don't have high hopes for it. Okay, now I need a cable, audio cable, and I need a micro USB for power. Sure, I had one. Right, okay, let's try this. Right, which one is power? That one. 
Ah. We have a, a flickering light, which is not flickering. It's flickering on camera, but it's not actually flickering, flickering. All right, let's use the Timu Bluetooth speaker then, as this is another Timu product. Let me plug that in. Right, and I've got this three and a half mil jack that came with one of these various Bluetooth speakers that I have. All right, earphone speaker. Oh, I see, look at that. Oh, so that's why the multicolored LEDs. So when you turn it on, you get green. I've got a red, indicates that it's got power. I've got a flashing blue, I'm guessing that's the Bluetooth. Oh, do we need to turn monitor? I've got my own little sound effects thing now. I don't know if you can hear this on my microphone. So I've got a studio audience, look. If I tell a, a really terrible joke, I've got some canned laughter here, look. Brilliant. We've got a round, applause, round of applause for when I tell an extremely bad joke. So this is what pay attention means. Bing, bing, bing. What's that all about? We've got Kiss. Songs one. Random. And songs two. Right. This is great. It's like having a little studio audience inside a little box of tricks here. Embarrass. Oh, the crow. Oh, that's if you said something that's really not funny. <laughs> So I guess the idea being that you're doing your podcast or you're streaming or whatever and you say something that you need a reaction to, you can just press one of these buttons and get a really awful sound effect. Oh, that's quite good. That's the noise I need every time I spot a failed tantalum capacitor. So these... Oh, these do light up. Chop, chop, in the chip. What? Major. C major. C major. Oh, C major. Oh, it's the key. All right, so this is some sort of effect you can put over music. Pitch bend, elimination. These must be all, like, effects that you can put over your music. All right. Okay, and they light up. And then you've got mic input and a mic echo. All right, let's try the mic input. Let's see if this works. Mic level. Does it not? Maybe it doesn't amplify the microphone, but it's got echo. Hmm. Two, two, one, two, one, two. It doesn't seem to amplify the microphone. So maybe it just uses a microphone for recording. Well, that's a little bit disappointing. I think from the gist of what I was reading from the instructions, the, the, the so-called karaoke mode on this, it says to plug the microphone into this one, condenser mic. But I don't have a microphone here with a three and a half mil jack, unfortunately that I can test that out with. Well, we're not doing well with this thing. Let's see if I can connect Bluetooth to it. We'll try, but... Okay, so it does... There's not much of an effect. Mm, a little bit. Yeah. makes it sound a bit more tinny. Yeah, the effects are not that effective. They're okay, you can, they do make a subtle difference, but not really that much. Now the power brick I had it plugged into was creating rather a lot of noise, so I've switched over to the battery bank, so I don't suffer any noise. And it can run, oh, 
look, if I unplug this, it can actually run off its own internal battery. So this is now literally just plugged into the speaker. So once the internal lithium battery is charged up, you can run it off of that. So yeah, it's got its ups and downs. <laughs> it's cheaply made, it's all micro USB. I still can't get the microphone to work. It may well record through it, but it doesn't amplify it at all. And the, the effects do work, but they're not really that effective. So I wouldn't recommend it, but if you need a little box of tricks to mix two micro USB signals together, then yeah, you could use it for that. There's probably other more effective ways, but hey, at least we know. It was vaguely interesting to look at, but I wouldn't say it's an absolute winner. It's not really a... It's more of a... Or maybe even a... Well, there you go. The V8 Live sound card as found on Timu. It does seem like the newer version of this might be a little bit better. The instruction manual that I downloaded for this from the Timu listing did suggest it had USB-C's on the back rather than micro USB, which is a welcome upgrade. But still, I think there's much better ways if you need to mix a couple of inputs together rather than this. But it was vaguely interesting to take a look inside and I hope you enjoyed taking a look at it with me. So not really one for my recommended list then. Well, hope you've enjoyed today's video taking a look at this random sound card from Timu. As always, massive thanks to everyone for watching, sharing, liking and subscribing. If you've enjoyed this video and you want to go ahead and hit the subscribe button, it's always massively appreciated and helps to support the channel. I'll be back soon with some more tech related videos, but in the meantime, take care and I'll see you on the next one.